uh, uh, Dr. Cordell West now, of course, is running for president as an independent candidate and actually made a big announcement today as a uh, running mate, which we'll talk about in a moment. It's always good to have you on the program. I know you've spent a lot of time in your um, life and work in Philadelphia and in this in this area. Reaction to what we're hearing in the in the breaking news here today at this um, Ramadan event. Two people shot at least. Yeah, I tell you, my brother, it's always a blessing to talk with you, though. But no, this is a holy day for our precious Muslims, my Muslim brothers and sisters of all colors. And I've been to Philly. I was just at a uh, bookstore, mosque, and a church in Philly just a few weeks ago. And uh, we got to find out exactly what's going on and just hope and pray that, that uh, not that many people who are hurt or injured. You know, my mind is still very much on Dexter Reed. I'm Dexter Reed in Chicago, 96 bullets coming at him within a matter of minutes in Chicago just recently. And this is the police shooting this brother in his car. And whoever it is, police, civilians, or whatever, you know, we've got to make sure that we have commitment to fairness, commitment to justice. And let's just not lose sight of the humanity of anybody yeah. in these very, very grim and dim times, my brother. That's what I'm concerned about. No, we don't. We don't want to, and we won't. We'll, we'll continue to follow it again. We don't have a ton of information to go on now. We know two people are shot. Uh, we'll talk and give, pass along more info as we we get it. We we're, we have you on today to talk about your own campaign because, you know, you, uh, tell me about this running mate you announced. Uh, Melina Abdullah is a professor, one of the co-founders, I believe, of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Right? Uh, tell me more about this. I know you need a running mate to get on those state ballots, but tell me about your pick. Well, I'm just so deeply blessed. It's with really great joy that I announced her being vice presidential candidate of my independent run for presidency. Why? Because she's one of the great love warriors and freedom fighters of her generation. She's a professor, she's an intellectual, but most importantly, she has a deep love, care, and concern for the people, meaning poor and working people, again, of all colors, but she, like me, we begin on the chocolate side, which is to say we begin in our own families, communities, our own networks of relations, and then, of course, the love and justice spills over for everyone. And so I'm very blessed to work alongside her, and she's brilliant, she's visionary, she's courageous, has been to jail many, many, many times. <laughs> uh, and that's always a sign, because- well, you're here, right? Oh, my God, yes. But you see, for me and, and for her, we're trying to put a smile on the faces of Martin Luther King Jr., Fannie Lou Hamer, Rabbi Heschel, Edward Zaid, Dorothy Day. They're the ones who set the highest moral and spiritual standards. And I know you come out of that rich Irish tradition. You've got some <laughs> standards, my brother, moral and spiritual standards. So when we talk about politics, not let's try to get beyond the lies, the revenge, and the greed, and the... And we're the trying. hatred. Let's talk about truth, justice, and love. We're trying truth, justice, and love. That works, sir, or it should work a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> the other thing, Ed, once you get beyond the truth, the justice, and the love, you need the votes, right? You need the votes. No, you true. need that. You need. It's got to be <laughs> practical. I want to know where you're going to be on the actual ballot, where you can have an impact on this race. I read that you're on in Alaska. I think it was Oregon, South Carolina, Utah. Am I right? Is that it? And, you got and what's, it. You got and what's, it, my brother. So, but you need but, more, but right? We got, got low, it, we got low hanging fruit. We got low hanging fruit. I mean, where Louisiana only. Dollar, but you have to wait for the deadline. Uh, New York begins now in just a few weeks, so that when I come back, and you all have been so very kind to me, I really I haven't forgotten about that. And that's why I said I wanted to come back when you talked about the vice presidential uh, candidate, because right. you all very kind. But you no, know, when I come back in about a month, I'm going to have a whole host wave of states to report. Swing to states? Because, well, we're going to see. We're going to we're, we're fighting. We're going to see. We shall see. Well, we got folk on the ground in Michigan. Very you know, it's fun funny stuff. because, like you said, we do, uh, you know, we've had you on a number of times. Um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has been on this network a number of times. We're talking to everybody, trying to have a conversation that, with everybody who's important. involved in this you race. And I think, you want all the voices. Right. I don't know if you saw, um, I think it was the New York Times that had an article about it, but apparently there's a strategy of the Trump campaign to yeah. elevate, um, uh, here it is, Trump allies have a plan to hurt Biden by elevating outsider candidates. So like, Candidates like you and others that uh, the Trump people seem to think that um, that's good for them if you guys are quote unquote elevated. Uh, what do you say? Well, I saw it. You see, Brother Tim Mellon, one of these billionaires, gave Robert F. Kennedy Jr. 20 million and he gave Trump 15 million. Now, we're still trying to get our first million, but we are on the way. We are escalating. We're on the move. But most importantly, you see, we want to make a case for our fellow citizens. 
and the other candidates have to make their case. It's not going to be just a matter of money. It's the case that you make and mm -hmm. the exposure that you hope you have to speak to the needs. That's why when I call for the abolition of poverty, the abolition of homelessness, when I call for the, the end of cease, the end of occupation in, in, in Gaza, and not just cease fire, but also the end of the siege. When I call for cutting back on the greed of fossil fuel companies, when I call for a whole host of issues that have to do with poor and working people, no matter what color, that's the case we're making. Now let right. Trump make his case. Let Biden make his case. Let the others make their case. We make the case. No candidate owns the votes of anybody. No, People I get that, but if you do take some of those votes, those are coming from liberal Americans, right? So they, if it wasn't you, well, it's probably going to be Biden. So is there something to that no, that you're, no, you're a spoiler? You're spoiling right things for Biden? 40% of Americans don't vote at all. Large numbers of people that I'm encountering say they would never vote for any party, and they never have, but I'll vote for you. So in that sense, I'm not taking votes away at all. No, not at all. We've got to understand that our fellow citizens are down and out. 62% of them working paycheck to paycheck, losing trust, losing confidence in any politician. Hmm. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.